Hi everyone, it's Tawny. I hope this lighting works out okay for this video because it's giving me issues today. I think the batteries might be going dead. So we're using the ring light from over here and the window light from like right there. So we're gonna try and make this work. I hope the quality isn't terrible, but if it is, I apologize. I'm still working on figuring stuff out. I am not familiar with shooting videos or taking like fancy pictures and all that lighting and stuff. Definitely gonna have to get better at that. But for right now, that's kind of where we're at. Just put on my moisturizer. I just got home from work. So this is only going to be like a five hour wear test, give or take. But we are going to be testing out the new and viral L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation and a Powder. This has been incredibly hard to find and I blame TikTok for that. Um, this wouldn't be so hard to find if TikTok didn't exist. Um, I'm one of those people that's like very anti-TikTok just because I don't like... I feel like it's along the same lines of people who don't like YouTube and who didn't like Vine and who don't like any kind of social media platform. So I do feel a little bit like my dislike for it is a tinge bit like stupid, but at the same time, like, Chad, do you fucking mind? Can you fucking stop? You have all fucking day to scratch yourself. No. I am not one of those people who's like, I don't want to say I'm super like Karen about all of this, but at the same time, I kind of feel like that's where I'm getting at. Like I don't have TikTok. I don't ever plan on downloading the app. I I may, mainly don't like it, not so much because of like the YouTube, the, the not the YouTube, the beauty side or the like cooking side of it or the DIY side. It mainly stemmed from like the fact that young teens who literally have done nothing but like not even sing but like lip sing and dance to like half crappy songs on this app are suddenly like billionaires. Like maybe it's just part jealousy that I didn't start doing that. But honestly, like really, like that's really what you want to be known for is like you can bang your fist against your head and push your butt out like really wow. Well. Um, maybe I am a little bit salty. I don't care. Um, I just kind of like feel like it's a little bit stupid. So I'm a little bit like anti TikTok and I think that's just kind of like me as a person. I just went in with my primer and it was the NYX Angel Veil Primer. Now I'm going in with concealer and it's the CoverGirl True Brunt True Blend Undercover Concealer. I need to calm down because it's making me like feisty. And that's not what we're here for. Um, I mean, clearly if I didn't like TikTok that much, I wouldn't be doing a video talking about one of the like more popular like parts of it. You know what I mean? Like stuff going viral and all that. I wouldn't like go into that. But at the same time, like, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm a hypocrite. I just kind of like, I don't know. I'm just very like, I hate whenever I see stuff that like makeup people have been talking about for a long time or makeup that's been out for a long time, but like the beauty YouTube hasn't really gotten around to it where people are like, look at this great hack I found with this super great foundation or the super great lipstick. And it's like, nobody's ever heard of it. We're going to make it go viral from TikTok. And it's just like, I just don't really like that. I don't know, like why it's just kind of like I don't know I'm just salty um it just kind of annoys me that like I get that probably YouTube has done that but I feel like at the same time TikTok is kind of like taken over to a point that's like I don't want to say unhealthy but just not good and I just I'm not making much sense. I just don't like it. That's just my whole like, every time I see it, I'm just like, ugh. And it just, I feel like there's so many bad things with it that that's why I don't like it so much. Not so much that it itself is bad. It's just that like stuff surrounding it isn't very good either. You know what I mean? Okay, so I just put on my concealer. Now I'm gonna go in with the powder foundation. I watched one video on this. I was gonna watch a second, but I wanted to do my review first before I went in and watched more videos about it. So I watched Jessica Braun do this 
and she compared it to the Fenty powder foundation. So I'll link her video down below so you guys can see like where I'm getting my viewpoint from. And she went in with the sponge, this really crappy white foam square. And she just like smeared it like this on her face. I feel like that's a really good shade match because anytime I've seen this out anywhere, it's literally been like the last four shades, which are deep. I would say medium to dark, not even deep, but they've been very like on the darker side to the point that like I can't even make it work. Like it would be more of a bronzer for me and even that's like stretching it as a bronzer. So I finally found this, I believe at Target when I went shopping yesterday and I found this shade is shade 10 porcelain and I think they had one more shade, but it might've been like 20 or 30. It was like close, but not close enough. And I was like, maybe I'm shade five, but they only had one of the 10. And I was like, I have to get it. Like, if I'm going to test this out, if I'm going to like try and see what the hype about all this is, I really need to like jump on this before it's too late. So as you can see, this is what my skin looks like with it on just this little portion of my face versus without. I feel like I do get a good bit of coverage. You can definitely see the mattification on my face, which I'm like here for. I love mattification. I'm wondering how this will work with my oily skin. So we're going to test that out in our five hour wear test. I'm not sure if I'll have a video about the results or not, but stay tuned if I do. And I'm hoping it does okay. I don't really plan on like sweating a whole lot, but I will be clearing out my closet and cleaning and stuff. So maybe, but, and I want to preface this, like I probably should mention, I am not a super big fan of powder foundations only because I have never had good luck with them with me being oily skin and with having acne prone skin. I found that I never really had much luck getting them to cover things. I felt like it always just kind of got a little bit sticky and like weird with the way that it messed with my oil and it just never really looked good. And I find that sometimes I struggle with that with even like setting my face with powder, like, you know, setting powder that's pressed versus like loose powder might be a different story because it's loose, but I still kind of like, I'm still a little bit like worried about how this is going to wear just because I've had bad experiences in the past with trying to use powder foundations, but I am definitely here to like, if it works, it works. Like I'm definitely going to like tell you that I'm not going to like change my opinion because I don't like TikTok or because I don't like so-and-so that talked about it, whatever. Like, I'm going to give you straight facts because, like, that is what's right. You know what I mean? So, it is applying really nicely around my nose and face. I'm not noticing any problems at all with my nose. And I know that Jessica Braun had some issues with her nose. So, that's something. That, and she has dry skin. So, with me having oily skin, I find that my nose looks normal with me putting on powder over top of my makeup. And most of the time I powder my whole face and then I go on with powder products. I like powder products more than like your typical um, gels or cream products, things like that. So I do think that this looks about normal to what my face looks like. And I am having a little bit of trouble getting around my nose, but that's the sponge, not so much like, it doesn't have anything to do with the powder itself. And I feel like I've applied a decent amount. I feel like you could go a little bit heavier. I am still seeing some blemishes. I covered that up with conce some concealer, so it's not as bad. But, like, you can still see this, and you can still see, like, up in here. That is a new cluster that just happened very recently that I, like, looked at, and I was like, what the heck is that about? Um, I tested out a new skin product, like a skincare product, and found that it did not like my skin. It broke me out in areas I do not normally break out in, like like particular spots were getting a little bit more like bumpy and pimply than they usually do. And I was like, okay, we're not going to use this because like, while it'd be nice to test it to see like why it's doing that, I also don't want to risk it with like breaking out even further. So now we're going to go in. We're not going to powder our face because we already did that. I feel like that doesn't really need to be done anymore. So now we're going to go in with our bronzer. And let's see. I think I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Primer Infused Bronzer in Forever Sunkissed. This is like my favorite bronzer right now. It really gives you that really nice bronzy look to your skin and offers that like really nice 
like tan effect like I feel very bronzed when I'm wearing this some bronzers don't really give me as much of a pow as this one does and for this being like five six dollars I really feel like it works way better than it needs to like when you're paying six dollars I feel like sometimes brands will like underdevelop a product or like not make them work as well as they should because they know that like it's cheap so people aren't expecting good quality but like elf really knocked it out of the park with this so I'm definitely like really liking that like, it is really nice. And I don't contour my nose, so I'm just, like, going over my nose and just doing that. This is what it looks like after bronzer. I don't like to go in too heavy because I find that, like, in natural lighting, if I go in too heavy on camera, in natural lighting, it looks like crap. So I try and go in lighter than I think I need, or at least lighter than on camera looks. Because I don't want to look bad in real life because you're only on camera for so long. Now I'm going in with the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer in Saucy Mauve. This is one of my favorite bronzers at the moment. I really feel like this formula is so underrated from the drugstore and like nobody talks about it. But it is a blush that I am like absolutely here for. I'm loving it. It's like McDonald's, but I don't love McDonald's. So like, there's that. Now I'm going to use a highlighter I haven't used in a while, and it's the Revlon Skin Lights Highlighter in Daybreak Glimmer. This is one I've been really liking a lot lately, and I'm kind of surprised because it's from Revlon. You can kind of see that I've used it a good bit. I definitely like the way it looks on my skin and the way like it shines without being overly like brightening and I'm being extra careful around my pimple I've been picking at this all day at work as you can tell so I'm trying to be really careful to not get too close to it so it doesn't make it look hideous but without like missing out on my cheekbones you know so now we are going to go in with my brows and I'm using the LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil. It is currently the one I have on my desk that I've been using a lot. So I'm just gonna go in and fill in my brows and then I'm gonna do my eyes afterward. I'll see you then. Okay, now we're going to go in with the C Color Cosmetics Dusk to Dawn palette. Currently looks like, well, it looks like this. And this is what the shadows look like. If you're familiar at all with ABH, this is a dupe for the Jackie Ina palette. Um, I got this recommendation from Julie Mazzucato uh, from one of her videos, obviously not from her directly, which would be really cool. But I got that recommendation off of her. And I've used this palette like once or twice, but don't really know how well it works. So I'd like to test it out now just to see how I feel about it and like do a decent look with it. I'm currently going in with the shade Foxy and I'm putting that all over my transition area and I'm really blending it out 
so it's not quite as intense because I'm not going to be going in with brown shades. So I would like to keep my look not quite as brown from the start. So I don't have to like cover it up as much. Now I'm going to go in with the shade Inception and it's this really nice plummy purplish color. It's the lighter purple in the palette and I'm going to take that and also put it in my crease but I'm focusing more so on the outer portion and then working my way in. Now I'm going to go in with the shade Raven and it is this really nice bright purple. It's showing up a little bit pink on camera, but it's a really nice purple and I'm going to pack that all over the lid. Now I'm going to go in with the shade Prime and it is that really nice pink and I'm going to take that above my transition area and really just make it so that like when you look dead on you see that pink. Wow, you're getting very pinky purpley in here. Now I'm going to go in with a well, I was going to use a different brush, but it's all covered in green. So we're going to wipe off that brush as best as we can, but we don't really need it like overly clean. And I'm going to use that to buff out all of that pink color so it's not quite as intense because I got a little bit carried away with this eye. And it's a bit of a staining shade, if you can tell. So I'm a little bit worried about taking this off later, but I'm just hanging out here at my apartment. So it's not like I'm like, I just have to make sure it doesn't look too crazy when I go to work tomorrow morning. Cause that's not the look I want to go for when I'm at work. And I'm taking that same pink shade and putting that on my lower lash line. I barely went in with that and you can already see the pigment in that. Wow. What a shade. I feel like there's a smidge of patchiness right there, but I'm not sure if that's me or if that's the shadow. So I'm not gonna let that bother me. Oh, and I'm noticing like, you can see it right there. It's not looking, it's looking a little bit patchy that's not so good not really liking that like it's literally not I don't I don't know um we're just gonna move on I'm gonna go in with my small skinny eyeshadow pencil and gonna put the shade sheen it's a really nice bronzy gold shimmer in my inner corner and we're gonna do that in the brow bone And now I'm going to go in, let's see. I want to use the shade After Hours, but I'm thinking it might be a little bit too brown. So I think I'm going to go in with Day One. It's this really nice purple shimmer and just put that all over the lid. We're going purple today. We're testing out a foundation. And we're testing out an eyeshadow palette, kind of, sort of. And we're doing a purple look. We are like getting it. And the cat is like losing his mind. Um, not quite sure what's going on there, but you know, it's what it is. He does what he wants. Um, so yeah, that is the finished eye look before mascara. 
I think it looks pretty nice. It's definitely not my favorite look, but I think it's not like the worst look ever. I think I've definitely done better, but it could be worse. Now I'm just going to go in with the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara just because it's the one I've been reaching for the most lately. And now we're going to go in with the Wet n Wild lipstick in the shade Bear It All. So now I'm going to go in with the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. This has been one that I've been using a lot lately and I really like the way it looks. So I'm just going to spray my whole face just to set it down and really help that powder stay where it needs to be. It smells a bit, it has like a decent smell to it and then you get like the after smell and then it's not so good. But yeah, this is the final look. I'll have to come back later and let you guys know how the foundation is wearing. I think it's really giving me nice coverage for a powder foundation. I definitely do have to say that, like, not that it couldn't give me good coverage, but for being a powder product, I do feel like it is covering very nicely. It sits a lot better than a good many of my, like, regular foundations, so that's definitely saying something, because I have some that don't even sit like this upon first application, but then sometimes those foundations do tend to look better later on, so we'll have to see how this one does, and I hope it works out, and I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Hey everyone, it's Tawny again. I'm doing the check-in for the... L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Wear Powder Foundation. I had to remember what it was. I'm surprised I got all of that out. Um, this is what it currently looks like after five hours of wear. I am very impressed. I'm not going to lie. I like really like this foundation. Didn't think I was going to honestly. I will have to say I liked putting my concealer on underneath. I'm glad that I watched Jessica's bronze video about doing that like she did that in her video it seems like common sense to put a cream powder underneath a or a cream or liquid or gel or whatever product underneath of a powder but for me I probably wouldn't have done it and then been like crap probably should have done it the other way so I'm really glad I watched her video about that and I really wish I had a concealer that was a skin color so that way I could like spot conceal better because I do have some areas, this covered up really well, but I do have some areas that I would have liked to have covered a little bit better that the foundation wasn't able to get. And I think it wasn't so much the foundation wasn't able to get to those areas, but it was more so that over time it broke down. As you can see, my forehead's kind of looking a little bit scary. It's getting a little bit shiny. I'll like you can see the shininess. I could definitely see it. I was FaceTiming with my boyfriend and I could really see it on my cheeks and my nose here. Those areas tend to get very oily on their own. So I'm not at all surprised that my face looks like that. I, however, don't think it looks bad. But here's what I do have to say. This is only after five hours. So I am a little bit concerned that like eight to 10 hours in, which is usually like my work day between when I do my makeup to when I get home from work, that I'm not so sure this will look decent, but it is something I'm willing to try. Like I am willing to do this type of look for work and see how it turns out. I feel like it really helped bring out some of the natural, like the natural color and tone and finish of my skin. And like, even with all the imperfections, I still don't feel like it looks terrible. I feel like it came out really nice. And I do feel like the oils of my face kind of helped with the foundation a little bit, which is the weirdest thing to say, because I feel like that's not normally the case. That's kind of something that like, people never 
talk about like that's not what happens but I do feel like it looks really nice I kind of noticed it breaking down just a teeny bit here on my pores but I feel like if I were to use a pore filling primer that wouldn't be a problem so I'm definitely willing to look into that and like try that in the future and see if that helps because the primer I used was just a very basic does what it needs to all over the face uh, primer so it's definitely something to think about I really think it sits well on the nose. I will have to say that is one of my like problem areas. This always looks like crap, so that's like not even the foundation. But I feel like this sits so well on the nose. Like I honestly, this could sell me on powder foundation. Like, and that's the weirdest thing to say because I am a very full coverage, very mattifying foundation kind of a person. Sometimes I go for more fresh wear, but most of the time it's mattifying. And while this said to be mattifying, I don't feel like it was like overly matte. I feel like it was like the perfect mattifyingness for me. So it, I also kind of think like I like to try it with a brush, like a very loose brush, like a very loose, very big powder brush, and like try to use a light to medium foundation, spot conceal, do the regular concealer, the regular like all over look kind of thing, but use the powder, or the, use the powder foundation as my powder to set my face and really see how that works because it's so mattifying. I feel like that might also be a fun thing to try and just see how that turns out. But yeah, overall, I'm really liking the way it looks. I lost a little bit here, but I have been touching my face a lot tonight. And I was crying a little bit, but you can't really like see that. Very emotional episode of Hoarders tonight. So that's kind of, but um, other than that, it doesn't look terrible. And I honestly really like the way my makeup looks. The lighting's a little bit different from my mirror to like the camera. And I still feel like it looks really good in the mirror. And this is like my bathroom lights, which are kind of yellowish. But I think this turned out really good. I'm very impressed with the way this looks. So definitely check it out if you're interested. I think it's a really nice powder foundation and I would definitely recommend this. I will definitely be wearing this in the future. So let me know if you guys like this video in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified on when I upload my videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!